I'm going to do talking about new, uh, pneumothorax. I want to thank Chris Schramm also for this because we did ultrasound block together. So this is on a patient that we had had four years ago. I'm not sure if you remember him. Uh, so pneumothorax, you, it's a quiet Sunday morning in your emergency room and you get a surgical note, phone call. Ambulance uh, is arriving, sirens blaring, EMS arrives with the patient and then you see this. Talk to the patient, no matter what you're seeing in front of you, always run your primary survey, your A, B, C, D, E, make it a habit. I don't care if the patient's talking or you're seeing a big giant knife, you run your ABCs. A, he's talking to you, he says that he was walking down the street, some, some guy decided to stab him with a kitchen knife for no apparent reason, uh, that's your A. B, you listen to his breath sounds bilaterally, I mean, as the nurse is getting the vitals, which are stable, you're noticing the wound, but you listen to breath sounds, it's bilateral, symmetric, and you don't think on your auscultation there's a pneumothorax but you have high clinical suspicion because of this giant kitchen knife in his back so uh sees you get extremities are warm good pulses on all four extremities you're establishing axis d um deformities the c the kitchen knife exposure kitchen knife um nothing nothing else <laughs> Well, after, after that, after your primary survey, the chest x-ray is done, what's, next, what's the next thing you do? Can't give the answer. We've been talking about it. You do an ultrasound, you do it fast. What's the first window you want to do in your fast? Just in case, any penetrating trauma, especially interiorly heart. in the torus, you do the heart. Look at the heart, heart looks great. Then you do Morrison's pouch, no blood. You do the left kidney, spinal renal junction, no blood. Patrick Douglas, no blood. You're done with the fast. What's next? Why don't you do the E fast, extended fast. You put in the fast, you put the probe in a short axis with the indicator indi uh, pointing up to the head. You do it on the left chest. Looks good, right? Same shore, you got lung sliding. Put it on the right side, what do you see? Same thing, same image? There's no sand. There's no pleural sliding either in motion. Right? And there's a whole, and then we do this now as a habit, it's just something that we don't think um, an algorithmic approach. But those of you who are new to this, those of you who want a refresher, uh, there is a line by line thing that you can do in order to not miss anything. And the first thing I like to think about is my, one of my favorite movies, you look for the bat sign. Right? This is Batman, that's the bat sign. That's a bat, this is a bat on ultrasound. This is a bad ultrasound without the bat. <laughs> you see that? You kind of get it, right? Look at that. <laughs> okay, so what is the bad side on ultrasound? It's essentially the two ribs up on top. You see the two rib shadows up on top, separated by this horizontal plural line in the center. And reflected below it are other A lines. Right? If you don't believe me, there's another one. It looks like a bat or a frog looking at you. I don't know, frog sign, bat sign. But yeah, two ribs on the, uh, flanking the pleural line in the center, right? And what's the pleural line? This, that's reflected off the pleural line are A lines, these hyperchoic horizontal lines that show up below the A line, and those are just reflections off the pleural line to show that your pleural surfaces are good, normal lung surfaces. If you don't like that, there's also the B lines. After A comes B, B lines are the vertical hyperechoic lines that reflect down to the, that dis, like kind of disappear down in the end, end at the bottom of the image. And those are uh, indicating a subpleural interstitial edema. Obviously, if you have a lot of B lines, you then have suspicion of pleural edema, but we're not talking about that. B lines are indicative of good lung movement and no sign of pneumothorax where you're pointing your indicator. If you like motion, lung sliding, those of you who are not seeing lung sliding, it looks like this indicating movement of pleural surfaces against each other during respiration. This rules out your pneumothorax at the side of the probe. It does not rule out pneumothorax completely. A lot of you sometimes just do one view on one part of the chest and then move on to the uh, other side without going down um, rib by rib by rib, right? You do M mode. You take the bat sign again, go back to bat sign. I don't know. This bat sign, you take the, the two ribs with the pleural line, you put an M mode, press M mode, you see this vertical line. Go at the center of the pleural line is the best. Press M mode again, and you get this one-dimensional view 
uh, monodimensional view of the lung surfaces during uh, respiration, and you get the sandy shore or the seashore sign that rules out normal thorax where you are, then move down to the other rib to do the same thing until you, if you have clinical suspicion, suspicion looking for something like this, a barcode sign, which indicates that the lung surfaces are not moving during respiration, suggesting a high, uh, suge suggesting highly of a pneumothorax. And if that's not further convincing enough, you want to see something like the lung point slide, which is on B mode, which is the, the normal mode, the 2D mode, is the movement of pleural surfaces against a motionless pleura. Essentially, uh, lung sliding to motionless pleura is, a, is indicative or 100% specific for a pneumothorax. If you want to do an N mode, is essentially you'll see Sandy Shore that turns into a barcode. Uh, but once you see this, that's pretty much it for pneumothorax. So systematic evaluation of pneumothorax, usually the air in the pneumothorax will rise to its highest point, which is why you do it anteriorly. All right? So the patient lying supine, the air rises to the top. You do the, uh, the probe uh, on a short axis with the indicating toward, indicator towards the head while the patient's lying down on the bed, supine, not prone. That's... On 2D mode, short axis, you find the bat sign, then you look for the pleural line, A and B lines, and lung sliding. Those are all things you look for to show that you're okay where you are, that you move down rib by rib by rib, uh, especially with high clinical suspicion for a pneumothorax. If you think there's an anomaly, or you're not quite sure if it's moving, let's say the patient has emphysema, COPD, right? That it's, you think you see like a lung pulse, but like you see the lung is kind of moving, but it's not sliding, you do end mode, Still not sure, you see like a barcode, it's a likely pneumothorax high probability. You might want to correlate with a chest x-ray. And then finally, if you see a lung point, that's 100% specific for a pneumothorax. That's my five minute, 10 minute Pachacucha. Any questions?